Hello, I'm Mary Major Jack. A few years ago, I was introduced to a story about a religious leader in Africa whose time has come to be revealed. I was told he never sleeps, that he watches over his temple day and night, that he has physically appeared before many around the world, yet has never left Nigeria. History has documented his prophecies as truths. He predicted the end of the Soviet Union and the Middle East Peace Pact. Biblically, he has prophesied some illuminating stories, such as an immaculate conception, a child that is now five years old and uttered his first words at three months, saying, God is in Africa. As newsworthy items such as this continue to call for the search of the sacred, we went on a search ourselves for this man who says that he is that spirit that Christ called for. He calls himself the Comforter. The kingdom of this world, their kingship is falling and fading, as was revealed. But the brotherhood of the present star, with its kingship, is reigning and reigning. Calibre, Nigeria, once called the Bite of Biafra, was also the port where more slaves were deported between the years of 1690 and 1807 than any other African city, an amazing 30%. Calibre is now the home of one of the largest spiritual movements on earth, the Brotherhood of the Cross and Star has become a way of life for millions who believe the Divine Comforter is here on earth. You know, the Bible said, the elder shall serve the younger. That's Esau shall serve Jacob. And uh, till when the yoke will be taken off the neck of Esau, then Esau will have dominion. So you find the United States of Amer America is an actualization of Jacob. Gorgi Dinka is an author who first came to the Brotherhood because he wanted to prove it was phony. After investigation and witnessing his own miracles, he now has written a book proclaiming the history that he says substantiates the leader of the Brotherhood is God incarnate. Eurocentric uh, racist uh, propaganda has made us believe that the God who created Adam had a white skin and straight hair. But their own science and archaeology has established that the first human being was an African. And if God created man in his image and likeness, and the African is the first human being, then God's image and likeness is African. So if we are looking for the return of God to paradise, 
is going to come in the form of an African. Because that's what it was before. Isaiah 63 asks a question. Who is he that comes from Edom with dyed garments from Bosra? Why are you red in your apparel? I who speak in righteousness mighty to save. Here it is explaining, while the world is looking for the deliverer to come from Israel, Jacob was called Israel, Esau was called Edom. Then the Edomites are the ones in the last generation that would have the dominion. And that represents Leda Olumba, who has come from Edom. And his garments are red in color. And he is here to establish that righteous kingdom and teach the world. They are talking about the sole spiritual head of the Brotherhood of the Cross and Star. He is Alumba Alumba Abu. His assignment on this earth, beginning with his name, is believed to be biblically prophesied. As an example, Revelations 19.12 reads, His eyes are as a flame of fire, and his name is written that no man knew but himself. He was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. You see everything fire and white. Now nobody knows what is happening. Is the change over? Hmm. The old world has passed away. Since the time of Christ, right, it is finished. The old things. White man, if they have their own tradition, no more tradition in this kingdom. The only one tradition is love one another. The teaching of Christ, that is teaching. Because he advised that we should, when the comforter shall come, he will just teach us everything. And now the comforter has come. The comforter has come. Alumba Alumba Abu, allegedly born into prophecy in Biakpan, a rural farming village in the delta of Nigeria. Biakpan means city of the first sun, a village today that is steeped in tradition, where being a dancer is a badge of honor, and where being one of the village's 12 chiefs is the highest respect, whom all declare the legacy of Alumba Alumba Abu is true. So on the day he was born, according to our family archives, there was a very old woman in the compound. This woman had got so old that she became blind. But when Olumba was born, the woman heard the cry of the new baby and was led to go and say thank you to the mother of Olumba. And in fact, as soon as the baby, she, the blind woman touched the baby, her eyes got opened, and this woman became well until her death. Many say he is just a man, born of an earthly being. The Brotherhood retorts, as it should be. In Revelations 12, 1, a woman would conceive and would bear a son, and her son would be caught up to God and his throne, and he would rule all the nations with the rod of iron which represents the word of God. While the world is looking up into the sky for that diabolical body to drop down to the earth, they are omitting this portion where that woman would be conceived of a son and would bring forth that male child. So coming again in like manner is, as Christ came through the womb of Mary, so shall the comforter come through this woman, as written in Revelations 12, 1 to 5. And that is Lida Olumba Obu. Lida Olumba lived in Biakpan till the age of eight. Then, for a better education, although limited, moved to Calabar to live with his uncle. Even before starting primary school, he had enough followers to start his evangelical work. And it was this modest pulpit in 1942 at 8 Itan Street, Calabar, where his small prayer band started the journey to the prominent international fold it is today. Not be God, not be Jesus, not be Christ, not be prophet. I'm all Obu. His assignment is ideal, and I must admit, godly. But I want everybody to live in the same level. 
love one and everybody. That's what I wanted, the whole world. That's all. That's my mission. He says he has come to the, into the world first to teach, teach the world about God. He is that Holy Spirit that our Lord Jesus Christ spoke about, who will come to teach the world and lead them into the absolute knowledge of truth. For the multitudes who are believers in the New Kingdom and their sole spiritual leader, their accounts of Alumba are mystifying. I have never gone to any school, any, any, any theological school, or anything at all. Now I can tell you all what about you. Tell you all these trips, tell you everything. Tell you everything in America, everything has going on. You know? I've never go there. I've been to America physically, but now all this, everything there, I know. His words, he does everything with words, and his words come true. Bishop Isukwo Akanam tells two stories of leader Alumba's prophecies, which history has documented as truths. In the eight, early 80s, he told me to set up Bethel's in Soviet Union. Firstly, you were not allowed to preach to a Russian. So he kept asking me, what about the battle in the Soviet Union? I said, Father, it's impossible to do it. They don't accept God. By 1988, he asked me again, have you opened the battles, I said, in the Soviet Union? I said, Father, I've told you, it's impossible. We can't do it. They will jail people. He said, okay. They don't want to hear about God. I said, Father, they don't want to hear about God. And he told me, right, from today, there is no Soviet Union again. He then asked for one Christ servant, Solomon, to go to Russia. That Christ servant works in London. He's one of the missionaries in London. Told him to go to Moscow. Go to the Red Square. Walk around Red Square. Say prayers and come back. And this is the story he told me when he came back. That night, around 5 o'clock, the father came and took him by hand in the dream. It was like a dream or trance. Took him by hand to Red Square. As they got to Red Square, there was a big tree standing in the middle of Red Square with a big lion on top of it. So when the lion saw them coming, the lion threw all sorts of rocks and boulders at him to kill him. So he was busy dodging like a boxer in the ring to dodge those boulders. The father was still leading him until they arrived at the foot of the tree. The father told him, look down at your feet. You see a small pebble there. Did you see it? The man said he saw it. He said, pick it up. He picked it up. He said, threw it at the lion. He threw it. The small pebble hit the lion, and the lion crashed down on the ground, and he woke up. He was so terrified, he couldn't sleep. So by morning, he quickly dressed himself up in Sultan. You know, Red Square is a public place with visitors and so on. Went down there, walked around with fear, quickly said prayer, and ran back to his hotel and returned to London. That was the end of the Soviet Union. Gorbachev, President Gorbachev, started glasnost and Paris Kraika immediately. And from there, Russia collapsed till today. He said, unless a battle is set up in Israel, there will be no peace between the Jews and the Arabs. Around the 1990 or so, the United Nations called for some troops to go to that area, peacekeeping troops. And Ghana cont contributed one battalion for that peacekeeping assignment. Inside this battalion were some brethren from Ghana who went with the troops. They are officers and soldiers. When they arrived there, of course, they naturally needed a place to worship. So they got a place and started a battle. You remember what happened? Arafat and the president of Israel secretly signed a peace pact. After all these years of Camp David Accord and this and what, there was no peace. Immediately that battle was set up. They signed a peace pact. Immediately. Pastor Emmanuel says one of his many encounters with leader Alumba helped him to save the lives of an entire plane of people. I came across uh, Brotherhood in India. In March 1985, we went on holidays to Srinagar in, in India. That's not the uh, northern side of India. So now we're coming back. We were all in the plane, the whole family, four of us, and the plane was packed full. All of a sudden, we descended, and we banged at the top of a mountain. So I heard a voice, Emmanuel, 
Call on the Father. The plane will be exploded. Call on the Father. So I remember when I was young, he said, wherever you go, I'm there. In fact, it wasn't because I was stubborn. I was so child. And look at all the people there. I could not be calling on Father. So I, was, I said, oh, you have promised that wherever I go, you'll be there. The voice came again. By the time I heard the voice, we banged on the mountain the, the, the second time. We thought the plane has already exploded. The next thing I heard was that since you refuse, I will glorify myself. I am Olumba, Olumba, in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. I heard the voice, not from my mouth, but came from my foot. Went all over my body and screamed, Fire! Then the plane vibrated so much that the captain came in. They saw the drama that was going on. To be very frank, I was in myself. I couldn't, I didn't know where I was. I didn't know what really happened. All I could realize that a voice took over me. So when we landed, we saw so many of the Hindus and Muslims. They came before me and they all knelt down. Started touching my feet. Then I didn't, I couldn't understand what was really going on because it was a strange thing that ever happened. So I asked one of them, what happened? But it was then they told me, well, you are someone very special. And because of you, all our life here was saved. Alumbo Lumbo Abu has never left Calaba, but has physically appeared before many around the world. It is written that he stays in the temple day and night, that the sun does not light on him, nor any heat. If he would go outside of the temple, he would be the wrong one. But he is lavishly seen all over the world. He reveals himself to people here in America, Europe, Canada, Australia, South America, and thousands of people have come into the kingdom by spiritual revelation. He conquers distance, he conquers space. He's here as we are talking. He's sitting right here. This is home video of Lisa Uchina, who often sees leader Alumba at her home in Los Angeles. Pay attention to the chair she pushes. I'm shaking his hand right now. But I feel him. Smell too. <laughs> <laughs> it works, huh? <laughs> it won't work. He's sitting right here. See, I can't even move the chair. Push it. This is a true story, and it's one that happened to me. First, let me tell you that I'm not the type of person that believes in the supernatural or strange events. Typically, I've explained everything that's ever happened into my happened in my life this exception of this experience that I'm about to tell you. Stephen Tarpley is a non-member of the Brotherhood from Columbus, Ohio. He is a videotape photographer and editor. During a Nigerian wedding in Los Angeles, he offers this story, another physical revelation of Leader Alumba. During the wedding, before the formalities kicked off, they said, uh, the MC said that they were going to start the ceremonies with a prayer and a, a prayer given by their spiritual leader. Again, I didn't think much at the time. Uh, I kind of followed the lead of the MC. I swung my camera around, and I noticed a very, very large black fellow, I mean, very large, uh, well-dressed, but he struck me as kind of a bodyguard, and there was an elderly gentleman uh, walking behind them, approaching, approaching the stage. And right before the older gentleman began to speak, the MC said he apologized to the American guests, saying that this prayer was going to have to be given in the native language of Ibu. And shortly after that, uh, they exited the stage to the left, which was very close to where I was set up. I panned the camera to catch them coming down the side exit, but I never saw them leave. Uh, again, nothing very strange there, but Deep inside, I couldn't wait for the event to be over so that I could get back to my friend to ask him about this particular spiritual leader. He was introduced as Alumba Alumba Obo. 
So when I took the tape back to my edit suite and went through the tape, that's when it hit me. Um, I didn't find what I just described to you anywhere on the tape. The next thing that happened was I was struck that when I went to my friend's house, he had a picture up on his wall, and I said, that's the man. That's the man that I saw, and who is this man? It's this, and as it turns out, this is the man that they refer to as Alumba, Alumba Wong. And I have no explanation as to how I saw him, why it happened, or why he didn't appear on tape. It's the only thing that's ever happened in my life that I cannot explain. In the Brotherhood, there are illuminating stories of exceptional occurrences. Trinita Obu was born of immaculate conception, a child of virgin mother. It is said his mother shed no blood at his birth. Sister Bernadette Oren is his caretaker, and here is Trinita's story. He, he is a special case in the sense that uh, we all know how every human being has come into the world, but he had not followed that particular pattern as it pleased God Almighty. He is from Zion, and um, his mother was just um, a virgin woman who was attending another church, not Brotherhood of the Cross and Star. But it so happened that once, uh, you know, whilst they were at prayers, God Almighty revealed unto the prophet in charge there that there would be a lady amongst them there who would bring forth a child without her having to, you know, have sex or meet any man. Well, when that message uh, came to him, uh, of course, um, he didn't know exactly what to do, but he decided to put it in prayers. Then along with other members of the church, that particular church in Zaire, they prayed and fasted and uh, prayed to God to give them signs to know which particular lady or girl you know, uh, God wishes to pass through to bring forth this wonderful child. Then after some time, it pleased God Almighty to reveal to them that uh, it is the person on whom a dove you know, will perch on her shoulders. Zayun government decided that they would put a close watch on this particular lady to make sure that she was a virgin. So they checked her to make sure that she was a virgin. And indeed, she did bring this child into being. And Lita Olumba, having the spiritual connection, sent two representatives of brotherhood to go there and bring the child back to Calabar, Nigeria. His name is Trinita Obu. And as reference in Revelations, this band of children are called the children of God. They are all virgins. None live at home with their parents, but instead at the Brotherhood headquarters, and their lives are dedicated to spiritual work. In Revelations, it is mentioned that there are some who have not defiled their garments, and they would walk with him in white, for they are virgins. And these virgins are now coming from all countries across the earth, and they're surrendering themselves to the service of brotherhood under the leader. And they just sing beautiful songs, do the spiritual work. Established in 1956, the headquarters of the Brotherhood of the Cross and Star is in Calaba, Nigeria. It is a Christian organization, six and a half million strong worldwide. Now entering North America, already in South America, Europe, Australia, most of Africa, parts of China and the Middle East. But what does this movement represent, this movement that is spreading with certainty? As the Brotherhood expands to the world, it is not a church, not a religion, but a way of life. 
and the way of life scripturally sets them apart. Our Lord Jesus Christ requested whenever he sent out the disciples, the 70 of them, to carry no purse, to carry no shoes. In other words, to walk barefooted on the planet. The greatest form of obedience to God is to prostrate and to fall forward on your face, to knock your head. Also, it seals the knowledge of God on your forehead. The seal of God then becomes on your forehead. And as Matthew would say, ask it shall be given, seek and you shall find, knock and it shall be open unto you. The diet is vegetarian. That man is to eat the green herb and the fruit of the tree that bears the fruit within itself. Since brotherhood is the totality of all creation embodied into one, then even the ant, the butterfly, the cattle of the field, the bird, all are brotherhood. The marriage and brotherhood is monogamous. One man for one woman. And it is even given by the leader that in this time and age as written uh, in St. Matthew about the time coming in the kingdom of heaven whether they, mar whether they do not marry or give in, in marriage meaning that now we are as brothers and sisters we are one family so it is not based of, upon sexual connection that makes the marriage tie as much as divine connection that makes a unit of a brother and sister doing one assignment to bring about the manifestation of the Word of God. So the marriage and brotherhood is very sacred. In order to gain total harmony, one accord, there are exercises, spiritual dancing and spiritual singing. The spiritual dance and singing is to coordinate our minds and synchronize our spirits on one accord. We are all repeating the same words and our bodies are all similar in the same motion. But why now and why the Brotherhood of the Cross and Star? This is the new kingdom of God. All oh, people, what they are doing now, every, everywhere, now, all, all the, the whole world, nobody know God. You know, as you are shouting, United States, they don't know, but they don't know God yet. They are looking. If they know God, they will not uh, just this uh, war, killing, bomb, and so no. Anybody who know God, cause division. You cannot hit. You can say this is a black, this white. No, when you do that, you are in trouble. We have been praying for 2,000 years. Let thy kingdom come. Let thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That prayer is now manifested into reality. And the Brotherhood of the Cross and Star is that kingdom that we have been praying for. I put my Antichrist come to deceive the world? And what substantiates the brotherhood from a cult? So that's why I come to teach you people, everybody, so that you may be free. No witchcraft, nothing, no hatred, no enemy. We are enemy to ourselves. We are looking God for up. Look out for sky. Look out for India. Don't go there. Don't go It's within his name. That tongue and yeah, I've seen him now. Yes. 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 Yes.
So now, now four years before the millennium, now the time when Olumba Olumba Abu is ready to be revealed. Now, as people are looking for the return of Christ, could he be the comforter? If God created man in his image and likeness, and studies repeat that the first man was African, could it be with a doctrine of love and purity? What is yet to come? He is the new ark, I mean new Noah. But the ark that is, he has created is a spiritual act which you get in by baptism. Noah's ark was a physical one. You had to get in and float on water. This one is a fire. And there's nothing you can use in stopping a fire other than insulation. This is a spiritual insulation which is uh, uh, conducting now. And those who get baptized in Brotherhood of the Cross and Star will be saved on the 31st of December 1999. There's a new world to start then which will be ruled by Edomite. That is the Edomite. Oh, you told me. Oh.